I finished the uh, boulder. And that's the corner that's not the best. I'm, I'm okay with that. I haven't ironed it to take the pen marks off yet. Now what I'm going to do is the binding. Now I've got some rivets left that I had for the outer border. You know, I've cut it off the corner. And the strips have to be one and three quarter inches. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut them into them first. The only trouble is I haven't got many red or yellow because in the end I had to open another jelly roll to finish it off. And this is the jelly roll that's open. So um, as you can see there's no red, no purple. I have got, I found two scraps of thread when I was cutting some uh, scraps this morning to put in my boxes. And this, oh, drop one, I'll get that in a minute. So I've got some, and I will dot them around. Um, I haven't got any bright yellow, no. I have plain. Uh, yet bright, bright colours, but I don't want to put them in here because they've all got patterns. So I'll just make sure that I keep how many reds I get, I'll divide them by four and splash them around the four quarters. That's the only thing I can do for now. I've got all my little one and a half by two and a half inch strips. I've kept my red ones, but oh, got one again. <laughs> I kept some of the red ones separate and I've got them in little piles and I'll pick up a red or pink with alternate colours and chain stitch them. So there they are, all on my little piles there. I can always add more if I want to. If I need to. So I'm going to chain stitch them together. I've done a few. Quite a few. So, so I've only got a few um, red, so I'll stick them with. Where am I up to? Yep. Yeah. So I've only got there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, five, eight colours. I'm sticking alternately. With every with a red to I run out of the red and then I'll do the other colours together. Just keep going like this, put two together at a time, quarter inch foot. Forgot to raise my feed dog, so I... Yeah, good tonight. Um going down the wrong way. Right. That's why I'm putting the colours on the top so I can see what I've done. Um. Exit. You don't have to about wrong, worry about wrong or right side. Just stick them together. That looks a bit thin. That's a wee bit thin, isn't it? Look. I can't do a two or three. That's one and a half inch instead of one and three quarters. What am I? If 
fabric. Life, as they say. So I've done a light one, I've got a light green here. And I shall go around again. Upstairs is back, clumping around. It's a bit hyper, so um, I'm hearing. I have been told. So my little squares into fours. Now I'm pressing them. Like that. Then I'm, I'm putting the ones with the red in one pile. Because I want to try and make them even. And all the other colours in another. I'll just split the red ones into even what piles and put them four lots that's all i'm doing at 10 to 11 at night just pressing these so i thought i'd just capture a little bit of video for that so what i'm doing is picking one from there and one from there And of course I can see the colours, they're roughly the same amount, I just count them, one more than one. That's okay, there's nothing right bang next to each other, the same colour. And 
going to actually make this strip up. Even though they're all joined together, I want four separate strips at the moment. today all behind today hair's yeah, still wet um right but i wanted to get a wee clip to carry on with my rail fence and the binding and i've done the wee bit section i've shown you but there's all my binding together i've laid it on the quilt does it four times on the longest part and i've ironed it pressed it in half and then what I'm going to do is sew it up, see, up on the end. So long. I'm going to sew it, sew it on quarter of an inch along the edge of the quilt, which I've trimmed. It's like a wonderful, a wonderful coloured snake laying on the desk. We don't have many snakes. In the UK, an adder and a slow worm, which is beyond size. The snake is a poisonous one, but um, not that poisonous, though. So there it is, all trimmed. I'm okay with that, pretty pleased with that. So we am. And what I'm going to did you do? Got an eye, a little iron out of it, not um, doing other stuff last night. Couldn't film. I didn't want to film in the light for this anyway. So, how I do mine is first, I've got cables everywhere. Cables are stuff I'm not even using <laughs> at the moment. Uh, so get on the bed. So I'm going to start, don't start in the corner. I'm going to start a wee bit down, halfway down roughly. I've shown how I do my binding, I think, on another quilt, but I'll do it, do it again. Um, I'll find the end again. 
I have no idea this turn out with all these seams. It should be, be alright, I think. So I have, I leave a fair bit before I start stitching. This is to join it at the other end and it gives you room to join them because you're attached to the quilt, a whole quilt by then. So I noticed on a bit, hold on a minute. I'm gonna add there's a wee bit of this quilt I haven't tacked down at the edging. So let me see if I don't know why. But I wanna do that. It's a bit puckery. I want a bigger stitch. Let's see how big this is. Green green, yeah. Just tacking it down so it stops it puckery and I don't know if I can See that? Uh, I've got numbers and everything in the way. Yeah, it's only to the corner here. Oh, I don't know. That's already oh. no, that didn't work. Long stitch. I don't know why that's happening. I do know why it's happening. Probably I should have put a walking foot on. I'm not doing that, but just tapping. So as it's not tied off at the end, it straighten out. That's better. Okay, we can always correct it. See, there's a wheel, there's a way. Hopefully. Moving the glass, it's warm today. Warm today here. Um, windows open. Not sunny, but warm. Okay. So I'm going to start here. I'll do a wee bit, get it on film, and then. Hoping I'll catch that bit. I'm thinking aloud here. Right, I need to take the stitches down. Oh dear, a little bit. Right down, up to 2.4. We're going to do reverse. Couple of stitches. I was going to iron them in, you know, the seams in towards the middle, but I no, I'm going to do it this way, and then I can iron them in once it's sewn on. But I'll show you a wee bit of that as well. Let's not big enough stitch. Let's have a look. Because um, it's quite thick. Let me just check again. I'm just trying to see if I've got. I'm a bit worried about not catching the edge of the border um, there, but that's okay now. If it's cut straight, it would be alright. <laughs> if I sounded it first, it would have been alright. <laughs> say this is what I do I want to see I want to show you um, mistakes as well I think it's good to see um, people make that's helpful it's good to see how, when they make mistakes and they admit to them and show them and you think great I watch Nick Zetner he's a geologist and last night he was setting up um, all his gizmos you know for live streaming and he wanted to test. He's always testing. 
and every time, are we five five? Are we five five? And everybody said, yeah, you're fine or not, you know, especially at the beginning. And I mean, last night's show was half an hour or so, and it was nothing but mostly technology and things like that. No lessons, no lectures. You know, he doesn't give a lecture. He just gives five minutes of teaching, and yeah, he's fun. And that's what inspired me. See, you don't have to sit there showing off or held up to the teeth and be natural. I like to be natural. Take and skin and take me as I am, but doesn't mean it horribly, but I am what I am. You have to think what you're saying this world, don't you on video? A friend of mine was reviewing one of mine. I've got it online. He says you swore. I said I didn't swear. I would be swear. I know I'm on camera. So you went through no you didn't. Well, I hope you like listening to me as well. Um, not boring you. That's the only one that knows me. Never stops. He never stops playing. Someone on the computer last night because I don't know what to say. Blimey, I mean, that's not like you. <laughs> I soon picked it up again. Just a bit on the quiet side, but he, it's a he, yeah, it's a he. Uh, yeah, it's not a boyfriend. Don't even think that. <laughs> um, he, um, he's quite content to listen to me more for one. We're coming up to the corner now, and a bird's nest. It is nice, <laughs> it's just as nice when it's all done. Um, you don't pull it, because especially these seams here, because then they, you know, the, um, the shrouds box. The seams where they join. I mean, they've got no tails whatsoever because they've just been cut. So you've got to be careful of pulling them apart. You just rest it on. Quarter of an inch of seam, uh, light sewing line. All I have to do is end a quarter seam. Right. Now, what I usually do is put it around the neck because it takes a lot of the weight off, drag off. Get it the corner and then at right angles. Make sure that line's straight there and you're on the corner. And then I finger press it. Some fabrics you can't see it and you might want to make a pen mark on it. But um, as I've made a few, I can do And this actually shows up. That's the good thing is I didn't end up with one of them little seams bang on the corner. I was dreading. Ever. I've got three more corners to go yet. That's not the end of it yet. No, no, no. Let's make sure I can stop. What I'm going to do is one more stitch. I saw someone the other day. Now usually I would back stitch, but somebody. So go into the corner of the left angle and go at a quarter five degrees straight into the corner. Hold on a minute, I think I need another stitch. Don't take my time. 
disattach take yeah finish zone right so we put it on a 45 degree you can see you can't see that can you give me a minute let's get it down a little bit eh? I hope you can see it then, yeah I go 40 um, 45 degrees stop worrying about it Bill 45 degrees on its shelf and then back down the other edge of the quilt. Now you can put a pen in there if you wanted. I'm not teaching just the way I do it, but you could put a pin in there somewhere there just to keep it because you've got to turn the whole quilt round. Okay. And when you're turning it just make sure all this is not flapping around um, and it gets caught underneath. You haven't got a lot of room there with this sort of wrapping, etc. So just be careful, aware of that. Okay. Put it under there. I go about a quarter, just over the quarter inch down, down the quilt. Put the foot down. I'm going to go back a couple of stitches. Because then I'll meet that right angle, the, the one that's going into the corner. And that's all it is, and then that secures it. And that's looking pretty good. So my, my actual iron on crease that I made there is, is obviously longer, but I'm not worried about that. I'll just have a bit, bit bigger border. Uh, binding on the back. I'm not a professional. This just what I learned, and things have probably improved. I didn't even know what width to cut the fabric, so I've only one and three quarter inch. You know, I might have got away with one and a half, but I didn't want to chance it. I can't have too much and too little. So now I'm going to go and finish this off. Right round. borders right round now we've got the joining bit so I've got to there and I back stitch so it's nice and secure as I did the beginning <clears throat> okay here we go so what I do get me pins I only need one pin actually The one goes at right angles there in the middle of your of your space. See what you're doing is joining it and you want this room so you can get it under your needle, under your in your sewing machine. You see that's why you give yourself plenty of space. If you only had that, you know, you you'd never get that in there. So that's the logic of that. So I said halfway roughly. I'll go this red one. I'm going to put this one down away. Right angles. Make a crease. And this one I'll go up away. So just lay it gently on. Now I could. In fact, I'm going to do it out to show. I could pin that on there just to stop it waving in the wind. Okay. Put 
put that down there. And then we want to make match this one and up away. Okay. So they match. There, I hope you can see that. Um, and what I'm going to do is to take it a little bit further. Just the tiniest minute bit. So it's nice and open and not too tight. Because you're going to have a little leeway. Then what I'm going to do, hold on, I'm going to put that back again. Don't mind that, that's too much of a gap. You can draw the lines on, which would be probably easier. I'm liking this video because memory on my camera. I used it all up and didn't put it on the computer um, to free some memory. So I made um, this square just for going to be for feathers and I've put the binding right round. I have put a whole little video together as well with this but I'm tagging this section on the back of the rail fence binding because it wasn't recorded and of course I finished the quilt before I realised when I went to edit it where's it gone. So I thought right I'll make this one. So I've done that as I say we've got the wee gap I had to do a little bit, I didn't have enough room. A wee gap, and I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> gonna put that one down, straight down, and, mark, and crease it, and get this one, meet it, and take it the opposite direction. And crease it again. That's nice and parallel to each other. That's a word, isn't it? Okay. I don't want it too loose because obviously you're going to sew straight across there when this has got rid of. That then, Bill. So I can take that a little bit more in. Then what I do is take that back over there and pin it. Pin it to just the top one, not this border here, just the one you've put up away. Again, you can mark this. It'd be so much easier marking, but I always make a hard job or something. Um, yeah. And this is why you need the space. See, look how near I am to that. I'm going to have to do that again. So, do I edit that out? No. Mistakes. Try again. That's up away. Put the feather on. That's down away. Put the feather on. Make sure on the edge there. Things we do for fun, aren't it? Okay. Put that over there. Get me pin again. So I'm only doing the layer that I've taken over, the one that's still up there, not the whole, not this border underneath, and pin. Again, there's a crease line. Could mark it on both sides. Then, this is this movement. It is a small gap compared to what I usually do, but, oh god, no, this one, yeah, 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 come on, come on, what it ends up is an X, the two, the bindings going in an X, I've still got me pinning, so I know where I am, I've got to maneuver that one, yeah, I've got my walking foot on as well, so, um, not making it easy. It's just a matter of the crease line touching this this one underneath it. And off we go. Turn the pin out and hold it with my fingers. And 
there we go. All this is going to be cut off. I'll do that now. Always take me time, so I do because none of me are cut through the border. Through the binding, I mean. And now it's sit there. Okay. You can fold that out like that. I haven't because this is just a, a, a muck around bit. It's just to show you how I join them. Okay, so I'll put it back under the machine. Still got my quarter, quarter inch foot on. So let me take it off. I'll leave that one open there. So I'll just trim up that little bit. That's out of the way. So I made it a wee bit bigger. Um, I'll fold it over like that. That's one and three quarters. I could have cut it one and a half, but I've done the same as what I've done on the rail fence. Okay, so I hope you're happy with that. Yeah, hope you're happy with that because <laughs> I run out of memory. I mean, I know this one's bad, but even that terrifies me. Yeah. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Got my old gear on today. Thank you for watching. Uh, put some comments up. I'd love some feedback. Obviously, good feedback. Um, subscribe and ring the bell, as I say, to see when I put some more stuff up. Thank you again. Take care.